Attention golf enthusiasts, get ready for a swinging good time at our annual golf classic. Join us on October 16th at Tustin Ranch Golf Club. Tee off for a cause, compete for fantastic prizes, and enjoy a day of golfing excitement. Don't miss out on the event of the season. Sponsorships and tickets are available now. Just visit stjonesorange.org slash golf. Let's drive change together on the greens. Oh my gosh, I didn't see you there. I was so interested in this week's Word of the Lord Bros series. If you haven't gotten your book yet, be sure to go to the courtyard today to grab one. And new this year for our campaign is the Audio Bible Podcast, where we have recorded a variety of voices from our St. John's family reading each book of the Bible that accompanies the nine lessons of our series. We've also added soothing visuals to the Audio Bible readings that we are posting weekly to St. John's YouTube channel. This video version will be a great resource for those of you who are meeting as a small group. If you have any questions, visit the church website or open your St. John's mobile app and tap the green Word of the Lord Grows link. Hey church family, it's Alex Gebert, your director of worship and music here, and taking a little break from my organ practice to tell you about the concert series. And what a wonderful blessing it is for me to be able to head up these concert series concerts, whether it's our Christmas concerts, which is just this huge celebration um, of Christ's birth in this sanctuary, in this beautiful place with orchestra, choirs, and handbells, or all of our other concerts in the season Sometimes we invite guest artists like Concordia University and Korean Lutheran High School to fill this place with their wonderful musical talents and skill. All of our concerts are free, including the big Christmas concerts, and so I'd love to see you there. You can find out more information at stjohnsorange.org slash concerts. What are you drinking? Of course I'm drinking my pumpkin spice latte. How about you? I, as well, am drinking a pumpkin spice latte because it's... It's fall! It's pumpkin season, dude! It's pumpkins! pumpkins. It's fall! We love pumpkins. We love the fall season. There's some of the great things that happen in the fall season. Like what? Football! <laughs> like foraging in the forest! Ooh. Here's a stick for you. Mine's bigger. It's better for s'mores! Oh. Uh, you know what else is great about the fall season is all the things we've got coming up at St. John's. We have so many fun things planned for your entire family. All you need to do is go to stjohnsorange.org slash family ministries. Good morning. good morning. Well, thank you so much and welcome to the house of the Lord today. It's so good to be gathered together. Uh, I, I love that we're uh, at the book of Philippians today in our sermon series. And it's uh, this, this warm conversation that Paul has with his greatest fans and the people he loves the most and the church that is, has got kind of their lives on track and, and it's filled with encouragement and love. Philippians is called the epistle of joy. Because Paul says uh, things like rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And those pieces, that, that, that marvelous sense of joy uh, invigorates our hearts and our lives as we gather together and worship together this morning. So welcome to the house of the Lord. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad we get to celebrate that together. Uh, choir's up and ready to go. Goodness gracious. We're excited to hear your uh, ministry of music with us. And and share a little bit of that joy that comes from knowing the Lord. Uh, if you're a first-timer with us this morning, welcome to St. John's. If you're a first-time in a long time, welcome home. And uh, pray that God speaks those marvelous words of joy, inspires your heart with us uh, this morning. 
We have a number of people gather with us online. I was telling our uh, crew, uh, our, we do a meeting at 8 o'clock to get everyone aligned. We have somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 people following along with us online during the service which doubles our attendance typically uh, throughout the week. And uh, we welcome you who are visiting with us online. Uh, if you'd like more information about St. John's, you're, you're saying, hey, this is kind of cool. Uh, well, leave me an email uh, on the card in the PRAC before you. Leave me a way to connect with you. I'd be honored to be able to do that and reach out to you with a, a, warm, uh, a warm greeting and a, a warm invitation into, into our community. Also on those cards, you may put a prayer request. You can notice when we get to the prayers this morning, they're extensive. There's a lot of care and love going on in our, in our congregation. We're wearing out Vicar Micah Rabel, uh, but uh, he uh, brings a marvelous brand of love and care to, to our community. But as we work through that, you'll see that this morning that those needs are, are extensive. With that, as the bell rings, we'll stand together and begin our service. Alex has prepared for us a, a marvelous beginning with a, a medley of praise to the Lord, the Almighty, and beautiful Savior to marvelous hymns of faith. As the bell rings, we stand together.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Love one another. Our Lord God, through the words of St. John's, told us to show love to each other. He said that if we love one another, God lives in us. Today we reflect on the love we have shown to our neighbors, to our friends and family, and even to strangers. How have we shown them perfect love? We look with honesty in our own words and actions. We confess. We admit that our actions and words do not paint a picture of perfect love. We have neglected our loved ones. We have said hurtful things. We have failed to give freely. We have been silent when we should have shared your gospel. All of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us need his forgiveness. God is love. God sent his son, our Lord Jesus, to rescue you. Because of his great love for you, whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Christ Jesus loved you so much that he gave his life for you, covering all of your sin. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have been made holy by the blood of the Lamb. Rest in his promise of eternal life. Amen. For today, Acts 22. When I returned to Jerusalem and was praying at the temple, I fell into a trance and saw the Lord speaking to me. Quick, he said, leave Jerusalem immediately, because the people here will not accept your testimony about me. Lord, I replied, these people know that I went from one synagogue to another to imprison and beat those who believe in you. And when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I stood there giving my approval and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. Then the Lord said to me, Go, I will send you far away to the Gentiles. The crowd listened to Paul until he said this. Then they raised their voices and shouted, Rid the earth of him. He is not fit to live. As they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air, the commander ordered that Paul be taken into the barracks. He directed that he be flogged and interrogated in order to find out why the people were shouting at him like this. 
As they stretch out, stretched him out to flog him, Paul said to the centurion standing there, Is it legal for you to flog a Roman citizen who hasn't even been found guilty? When the centurion heard this, he went to the commander and reported it. What are you going to do, he asked. This man is a Roman citizen. The commander went to Paul and asked, Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? Yes, I am, he answered. Then the commander said, I had to pay a lot of money for my citizenship, but I was born a citizen, Paul replied. Those who were about to interrogate him withdrew immediately. The commander himself was alarmed when he realized that he had put Paul, a Roman citizen, in chains. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading from Philippians 1, 1 to 11, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, 
together with the overseers and deacons. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it out on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth in sight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness and cut that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel. Please stand. It's from John 15, 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that you, my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant doesn't know, does not know his master's business. Instead. I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that what, whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
you've had those conversations, you remember them. There's only maybe a handful of them in your life, but you go back to those conversations where you engaged somebody or they engaged you in a way that changed the nature of your heart, the warmth of your relationship. Parents to children, friend to friend, colleague to colleague, there's maybe a handful of those conversations I know in my life that I can turn on like a video and watch and see and hear and almost put myself right back into that conversation. In 1981, I was finishing high school at Orange Lutheran. My my father was uh, either wise enough, kind enough, or crazy enough to let me pull his pop-up camper down to San Clemente, which was an experience all in itself. We pulled it behind my friend Jeff's old Impala, which could have put everything plus the truck in the back. That Impala was enormous. At one point heading down the 5 freeway, I looked at Jeff and I said, you're going 80. And the trailer was going like this. <laughs> I'm down the 5 freeway. My dad had said, you guys can camp out. You can use the camper. We were down there about five nights, six days. and Just the guys, just the fellas. We'd all kind of grown up together, a few of us from Zion, a number of them from here, including Don Pargy's son, Dwight, was a part of that as, as well. And I believe there were seven or eight of us down there. And we were all fixing to go. Everyone was going someplace else. Some were headed to Northern California, some to Texas. I was heading to Cal State Fullerton. But we all knew that this was kind of the last spring break, that from this point on in graduation, we would all be dispersed to wherever God would lead us. One night, it got really chilly and foggy as it does in San Clemente. And I had a, a little piece of maybe 18 by 18 plywood that I put into the fire as it got dark and cold. And it burned beautifully and slowly. And the guys came up from the beach and over from the station and in from the town and slow and steady, no girls, no loudness, no rivalry, no laughter, just hushed tones. Guy stuff, as my grandson says. Guy conversation. The crackling of the fire, the dancing of the flames on our faces, the reality that we'd probably never have another moment like this with one another dawned on us. And so we talked. We encouraged one another, we told stories, we chuckled a little bit, and we were all caught up in that beautiful moment that no one ever seemed to forget. So much so that 41 years later, as I was at a reunion this summer down near Disneyland, two of my friends, Scott and Eric, looked at me and they said, do you remember sitting next to the fire in San Clemente outside of your dad's trailer and just sitting and hanging out. We nodded our heads, we smiled and we said, yeah. We remembered the moment, the feelings, the conversation. And you remember. You remember those conversations you had with someone you knew and loved that shared your life in a very intimate, warm time, in a very powerful moment from which your heart was changed in a way that's so difficult to describe. The book of Philippians is that conversation. We started with Galatians and Ephesians and Colossians and Corinthians and, and every one there's this kind of coarse beginning to these books. Paul is saying, you guys are messed up, you foolish Galatians, you silly Corinthians, what in the world is going on? But the words of the book of Philippians, man, these people are close. They love one another, they're, they're tight. It's a community that, that, that really hasn't deviated from what Paul had given them to do. And it was so clear that they were partners in the gospel and that Paul had an affection towards them that was unlike the others, at least as far as the epistles read. Maybe when we get to heaven eventually, we can ask Paul what was his favorite church. 
And right after St. John's Orange, she'll say, the church in Philippi. You've had those conversations. You know those conversations. Those of us who are parents, we yearn for those conversations. Because it's in those moments that hearts are open in a way that maybe they're never open previously. There's three pieces of this conversation that I'd like to pull out for you. Three verses that just speak to our hearts this morning and warm our hearts in the middle of the fall, in the middle of the anxiety, in the middle of all we got to do and help us remember what God speaks into our ears and the great and deep intimate love that God has for us. As Paul starts this letter, the very first chapter, the very very top the third verse he says these words I thank my God every time I remember you where do you go with that what a beautiful thing to say to someone whenever I remember you I give thanks to God the first words out the shoot of this letter weren't you're silly you're crazy you're foolish The first words after grace to you and peace were, I thank God every time I remember you. St. Paul loved these people. They had a warm and a kind, a supportive relationship. And so first his heart turns towards gratitude, which Paul loves to do. And later on, he's going to point us all to grateful spirits. But he is specifically grateful for this congregation and this handful of people. In our age of busyness and taking people for granted and working through lists of things that have to, have to be done, thinking more like human doings or human androids that are programmed to have to do all this stuff rather than human beings, perhaps those words are words that we can take into our heart and maybe into our conversation. I thank my God every time I remember you. What a powerful conversation starter for those we know and those we love. It's so disarming and so beautiful. How's someone going to respond to that? What were you thankful when? No, no. It starts the mind and the heart spinning It calls to mind those conversations. It calls to mind those shared experiences in the best sense. It's letting the person know that you love them unconditionally and that they are the object of your love and your affection. It's letting them know that they are a gift of God to you. I thank my God every time I remember you. It evokes strong, loving, positive, kind feelings and words. And who needs to hear that? I think we all need to hear that. I think we all need to hear from the Word of God that God gives thanks every time He remembers us and that we as brothers and sisters in Christ, that we give thanks every time we remember one another. And then Paul points them to the gospel. He says, for you are partners of the gospel with you and me. You've always been there for me. It's the gospel that links their hearts and ours. It's that good news of Jesus Christ. For they're partners more than just uh, cheering for the same team or having a geographical, (coughs) having geography in common. It's more than serving on a staff or a friendship. They hold in common faith in Jesus Christ, forgiveness of their sins, the mercy of God, the common history that in Christ has drawn them together. Fifty years ago, they didn't even know one another. And now they're partners at the roots of the biggest movement in the history of humanity. And so Paul greets them with grace and mercy and peace. And those marvelous words, I thank my God every time I remember you. To whom would you say that today? And how would that help them lean in to the relationship that you have with them? 
Second piece of Paul con- Paul's conversation that I want to draw your attention to is Philippians 3, 13 through 14. Paul writes, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. He establishes this marvelous, warm relationship with them. And then he points them to Christ in Philippians chapter 2. He says, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. And he speaks of the humility and the exaltation of Jesus in the Carmen Christi of Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. And then he begins to, to speak again with words of inspiration and motivation. He says, forget what's behind and strain on toward what's ahead. Who better to say that than Paul, who in his past history was a scoundrel and a murderer. But now he was on a different trajectory. The Lord had taken a hold of, Paul, taken a hold of Paul's life on the road to Damascus, knocked him off the horse, made him blind, took him to be kind of rededicated and figured out. The scales dropped from his eyes. And now he's God's vessel to bring the gospel into the Gentile world. Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. What is your trajectory? Where are you going? What does it look like as you go? What are you focused on? Paul says he's moving heavenward. He's on his way. There's an urgency as Paul ages He's got this intrinsic thing inside of him that says, I've got to go. And maybe he's winding down a little bit. We're not sure what it was. My wife's grandfather thought for sure that Paul's thorn in the flesh was arthritis because her grandpa only had one arm from a farming accident and his hand was filled with arthritis. He said, I'm pretty sure Paul's thorn in the flesh, his pain was arthritis. And he'd smile and put his hair back in his farm house. I've had people say that Paul's thorn in the flesh was his mother-in-law. I don't believe that to be true. <laughs> Forget what is behind. Paul's saying, get on the bus. Let's go together. Come on. I love you. I'm with you. I thank God for you. Because we're all in the bus. We're all moving closer and closer to the Lord Jesus and eternity. Forget what is behind. Forget your regrets, your failures, your sins, your broken pieces. Leave those at the feet of Jesus. He's not counting your past against you. Why should you? Forget what is behind and press on, Paul says. What are the things before you? What are your ambitions? What are you driving toward? Well, then drive and forget what's behind. Strain on toward what is ahead. For what is ahead is heaven. Yesterday, I was able to officiate at a memorial service for a a great member of our congregation. She was 103 and a half years old, and she's got a group of people here from Beamer, Nebraska. 103 and a half years old. I visited with her the Thursday before she passed. And she had this beautiful red hair, all dolled up and perfect. There were two things, well, three things she didn't miss. She didn't miss her hair appointment to make sure that beautiful 100-year-old hair was red. She didn't miss bowling until she finally couldn't go anymore. And she didn't miss worship at St. John's. All three were critical to what she was all about. As I visited with her, she sat in her chair with the sun kind of coming in from the street on Anaheim, and she reflected on her life. She knew that her heart was going out. She knew that she was hurting, but she also knew that she was on her way to see Jesus, and her words were filled with hope and peace. She knew that there would be that moment where the heart would stop, but she didn't seem to be anxious or worried about it. She was tranquil. It was one of those visits that was inspiring to me where I dove down the block and turned around and instead of going to Jack in the Box to get the two taco deal, I sat in the car for a minute and reflected on what it means to be moving heavenward. 
Her life was inspiring. Yesterday, the family gathered together. They celebrated with story her faith. And the peace and the kindness that they had lasted all afternoon over in Walker Hall as they rejoiced at her receiving the prize for which God had called her heavenward. We're all headed to heaven. And sometimes in the midst of all of the garbage of the world, we forget that. Paul, to the people he loves the most, there in Philippi and here this morning says, forget what is behind and strain on toward what is ahead. And then that third piece. One of the most ambitious sermon series I ever put together was preaching six or seven weeks on Philippians chapter 4. And as a congregation, we about had that memorized in four, five, six, seven, verse, uh, four verses. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, we about had it memorized. Let's see if you remember. I'll start and you join in as you're able. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Tuck that in your heart. You and me, we... We need that. I was reminded this week with just not feeling well 100%, and now feeling actually this is the best I've felt in five days. I feel pretty good today. I can go another probably three minutes till my voice gives out. But our congregation is back to pre COVID levels in terms of programming, but our impact, our impact has probably not been greater. In years, at least as many years as I've been here. And there's an anxiety that begins to grow around the edges of our ministry. And things start to kind of get a little frazzled and people get a little frazzled and I get a little anxious and others get a little anxious and we bring our anxiety together and kind of slowly whips into an anxiety tornado and we say, oh, what are we going to do? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. And then verse 6. Don't be anxious about anything. But in everything, with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I love the, the pieces of those verses that are inclusive. Always, all, anything, everything transcends all. God has your life, your total life wrapped up. There's not an extraneous piece of it that he is not willing or ready to forgive or that you can hide from him. God is with you. And your life is wrapped up in his love. His conversation with you is not a tongue lashing or a brow beating. When he remembers you, he gives thanks. When he looks at you, he encourages you on your way to heaven. And when you're anxious, and we live in a chronically anxious culture and nation, and we're just getting started in the election cycle, if you think you're anxious now, remember, your Lord Jesus, when you're anxious, he calms you. I think we need to be mindful of that calming presence of the Lord. Anxiety, it sneaks up, it wraps up, it suffocates. But joy, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Joy is rooted in Christ and those roots go deep. The branches grow and flourish. 
The good fruit is the ability to navigate difficult times. Man, the Philippians are going to figure that out. In the church of Jesus Christ for 2,000 years, we've been able to figure things out better than any empire in the history of the world. The people of Jesus rooted in his love. Understanding that in difficult times and in all times, we who are heavenward focused are tethered to Jesus. And he's drawing us nearer and nearer to himself with his love. Every time, every circumstance, all things, being mindful. And being mindful isn't a punch in the mouth. Being mindful is looking at that anxious situation and saying, you know what, there's another way I can think about this. The preacher said, remember, rejoice in the Lord. Okay, I'll chill. Rejoice. Wait a minute. Just wait a minute. And be reminded that you are in Christ. And Christ is in Christ you and with him you will make it through don't be anxious about anything but pray about everything ask and give thanks and the residue of joy is peace the next fruit on the tree of the vine is peace let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts when our lives are pointed toward heaven, when our hearts are united in Christ and with one another, when our conversations are filled with goodness and depth and encouragement and love, then by all means and in all circumstances, we can rejoice and be grateful. Those words will ring in my ear today. And until I see my Lord face to face, especially with the affection that a pastor has for his people in a setting like ours. Whenever I remember you, I always give thanks to God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's stand together as the body of Christ and confess the Christian faith. This morning we confess the faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, on the screen or on page five in your worship folder. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary, born in the Virgin Mary, was by the Holy Spirit, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and stood to the right hand. This morning, our prayers are extensive. Uh, one, one note I'd like to call to mind, and that is that there's a funeral service for a longtime member of St. John's, Mr. Bob Rao. Uh, Bob passed away uh, with his uh, family in Las Vegas. Uh, Bob was 93 when he passed away, something like that. The funeral will be at uh, Fairhaven at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, and uh, we will remember Bob's family in our prayers as we go to the Lord right now. Heavenly Father, may we rejoice and rejoice again as you and your servant Paul did over the good people in Philippi. So too, Lord, you rejoice over us. The gospel reminds us of your great love for us in our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant us humility. Grant us a, a spirit united and bless us as your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With your spirit, enable and encourage us to share the joy of Jesus and his peace that transcends all understanding with all those who you bring into our lives. Father, we pray that you would open up conversations of gratitude and rejoicing and grace in our homes and families and with those we love the most. 
We ask that you would give us a daily hunger for your word. And may your Holy Spirit work through your word in our lives each day so that we bear good fruit, fruit of joy, and the fruit of encouragement, all of which bring glory to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we have tons of people who are hurting and needing your care. Families asking, requesting prayer. This morning we pray for Ron Anderson, Betty Johnson, Rita Kennedy, Sheila Lilly, Rodney Nelson, Tim Pontius, Lucas Fitzgerald, Elsa C., Carol Stevens, Mary Strack, Alan Uzigi, Alicia Alejandre, Eva Alejandre, Jaime Alejandre, the Appleby family, Candy Ariza, Julie Ezel, Mike Farina, Juan and Maria Garcia, Jim Hetherington, Maddie Kehoe, Michelle Kylie, Nicole Michaelis, Ruth Moore, Cindy Pabus, Irma Piliero, Alan Primrose, Tom Scavuzzo, Laurel Shirtleff, Pat and Don, Pat and Dan Slama, Roxanne Zimmerman, Gloria Boyce, Patrick Burke, Jim Covington, Michelle DeGrave, Mikey Enriquez, Annie Bates Gansky, Caesar Elog, Barbara Mapes, Rory Moore, Helen Pleskatz, Mike Satras, Bob Schluter, Megan Small, Steve Stout, Dave Tibbs, Brent Von Barron, Howard and Louise Worthington, and all those whom we name in our hearts before you. Grant your healing, your grace, and your peaceful presence to your people. Remove anxiety from caregivers. And grant them supernatural energy and compassion as they care for those they love. Making difficult decisions and difficult calls in the midst of family and friends and those who love and support them. Grant us as a community of believers your grace and love and the ability to support and care for families in their most trying times. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we bring to you all the needs. We also bring to you a hand of rejoicing. We remember with gratitude this morning the, the marvelous blessing of a successful procedure for Emmanuel Jaya Chandran and for your protection over his daughter Esther. We give you praise for good news, for healing for Titsak Zabalos, and we ask for continued recovery for Emmanuel and Titsak and for all those who we know who are recovering from difficult times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for comfort and peace for the families who have lost loved ones. We pray for family and friends of Kurt and Sally Keller at the passing of Kurt back in Iowa. We ask your hand of blessing upon the Bob Roll family at Bob's passing. Thank you for his deep connection to St. John's and for the ability, Lord, both to laugh together and encourage one another. We ask, Lord, for your peace to rest upon all those who've lost loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, our provider, remind us daily the secret of being content in all and every situation. Whatever we have, whether we are in plenty or in want, or wherever we are, whether well-fed or hungry, we can make it through anything and face any challenge through him who strengthens and shapes us for his purposes. Turn us away from trying to manufacture contentment in materialistic and temporary objects. Help us see that the needs are met and the riches of your glory in Christ Jesus. Continue to turn us toward your word of encouragement and faithful to us. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we live in the digital video age. We've seen digital pictures and videos of the violence in Israel. How saddened you must be that this piece of the world upon which you walked and you ministered, where you died and you rose again, is filled with conflict. Lord, it's been millennia. And so we pray as generations have prayed for your perfect peace to rest upon Israel and all those residents. Grant that missiles would cease to be fired, that people would cease to be killed, that calm and peaceful voices would hold sway. We pray for the group from Concordia University sitting in Athens with our own Nate Stewie and Paul and Krista Elliott. 
Uh, we ask your hand of peace upon them and good decision making as they proceed with the trip, Lord. Grant them your safety and grant them your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Transform our minds to think about what is excellent and praiseworthy and to put what we have learned, received, or heard from you into our words and into our practice. For into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As you take your seat, I'd invite you to please shake a hand and greet one another with the peace of Christ.
Let's stand together as we close in prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen.